Yep, I somehow managed to code a completely custom ray tracer for my engine that looks pretty good and it has potential to get even better. Ray tracing has been getting more and more popular lately because of how good it makes game look. But it is very difficult to implement without lag, which is why many games don't have it yet. I've been working on this voxel engine for a while now, and it seems that I always run into lag problems. At the end of the last video, I really had quite a bit of lag when moving around. That was mainly due to having to create so many meshes for the voxels. Every time I loaded a new area, or the level of detail of an area changed, a new mesh had to be created and spawned. That was pretty rough, but after seeing this I realized something. Meshes are overrated. Me and the boys use... Ray Tracing. So usually the way a 3D renderer works is kinda like this. You have meshes made of vertices and triangles with a position in the world. Every frame the GPU will try to project the vertices of those meshes onto the screen based on the camera position and rotation. Then it fills the faces between vertices with the colors of those faces. Simple, right? Retracing, however, kind of does the opposite thing. For each pixel on the camera that we need to draw to, so for Full HD that'll be 1920 by 1080 you trace a ray from the camera going forward until you hit something. When you hit something, you can render the color that you hit for that pixel. The cool thing is that now you can also trace other rays from that point to calculate shadows, reflections and more. You can also modify the path of the ray to create different effects like refraction. Now I can hear what you're thinking. Wouldn't ray tracing make everything even more laggy? The answer is maybe, but probably not. For typical games, using ray tracing can cause a lot of lag. But here, we are dealing with voxels. We can optimize that retracer so much that it becomes more efficient than rendering meshes. And it also saves all of the trouble of having to create and update meshes, since you can just trace rays directly in the arc tree. Let's get into it and you'll see. The first step is to use a compute shader. What this means is that the code will be run on the GPU instead of the CPU, so it's a lot faster. Because, you know, GPUs go brrrr. Thankfully, I found an example compute shader online, so I can use that as a base. Yoink. It just plays the game of life though. Whoa, that's boring. If I try to add that to my voxel engine, I get uh, a weird thing, but I guess it works. Then I change the colors to understand how it works, and yep, that looks pretty cool. But wait, I'm not trying to make the game of life. I want to display some voxels. Alright, let's disable everything else and try to render only using the ray tracer. Oh, we have a square! It works! Now I can try a few squares. Oh my god! But there's no way I can have a few squares with different colors, right? Okay everybody, stay calm, it's happening, it's happening! <laughs> okay, well, that's a pretty good start, but now I gotta move the camera and see them in 3D and, well, that is not gonna be easy. Hmm, they are now spheres, which is not really what I wanted, but the 3D camera seems to almost work, and the colors fuse together, which is pretty cool. After a bit of work, I managed to have kind of cubes show up, but the camera is still an orthopedic, uh, no, I mean an orthogonal camera, which means basically that there's no perspective, and it's bad, so let's add some perspective. For a normal renderer, this would involve making a matrix and blah 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 blah, but we are way too cool for this. For ray tracing, doing perspective is pretty easy. Instead of shooting the rays straight ahead in front of the camera, you angle them away from the camera the further you are from its center. Let's try that. Um, good try, but not quite right. Now it looks like I accidentally created a fish eye lens. That's pretty cool, but that's not at all what I wanted. Holy, that's actually pretty good. Sure, there are some slight visual glitches that you might notice if you pay close attention, but as a good dev says, looks good to me. So I kept going and made my world load using random colors for each voxels because we don't have textures yet. Surprisingly, it kinda works. The blue is the ground, the pink is the walls, I guess we could call this modern art. <laughs> I 
I can move around and everything and it looks almost like something. Then I tried to fix it and uh, I definitely did something. I'm just not sure if I'm making a ray tracer or something completely cursed. After some work it was better but uh, I was honestly confused about what that was. Doing some debugging made me able to see the terrain in a pretty stable way for once, but there's also apparently a portal to another dimension. What is that? I don't think I could remake this even if I wanted to. After closing the portal, it was a bit better, but there were still some black walls in some locations for some reason. I found a way to fix that, but it created some distortions. I think they actually look kinda cool though, but uh, no. That's not what I want to do, so I removed that and I'm getting pretty close. There's just some spots that look like portals into the void still. My attempts at debugging that almost made me blind from the amount of colors, but hey, I found the bug and finally got myself a pretty cool ray tracer. The only downside is that it is very low quality and increasing it causes a little bit of lag and GPU heating. I then added shadows by casting a second ray so it looked a little bit better, but that made the lag problem even worse. I would say the lag is mainly caused by something called a skill issue. Maybe I should have stayed in school. Anyway, now I think it's about time I explain simply how it works. So a typical ray tracer will look for triangles in the path of the ray, but my ray tracer is way cooler, I have voxels in an oak tree, not triangles. So the cool thing about Octree is that I can easily go down to a position I want. So right now I simply go down to the position of the ray, check if there is a voxel there, if so then I pick that color, if not then I move the ray the distance of one voxel and then repeat, until it hits something. The problem is that it can take over 50 steps to finally find one, so it's very slow and I have to put a step limit so I don't burn my GPU, because right now it is struggling and the limit is what causes those parts we can't see. So if I can optimize my ray tracer to take less steps, I can fix these parts that we cannot see. I optimized the code a lot by making it start each step from the last step result, so it only had to go up one or two parents in most cases and then go back down, instead of having to go down the whole tree every time. With that, I managed to increase the quality with the shadow on and still get decent frame rate. So I finally added textures and made the world load as I moved. I was pretty surprised by how good this was. It was still a bit laggy but not terrible and the quality was decent even though some spots were still not visible because of the steps limit. However, it seems like the changes I had to make kinda broke the structures and the villages. So I fixed that, added a sun in the sky that moves and added sun glare on the surfaces of voxels when they are aligned with the sun. That all looks pretty cool in my opinion. Then I tried adding the transparency of glass for the fuel spheres. My first attempt was uh, not so good. The second one was decent. I think it can still be improved but it's okay for now. Also I know the spheres are floating in the air but I have some more serious things to worry about right now. Like the fact that when I load a bigger range of map it lags so much. I managed to optimize my ray tracer even more by saving on load the neighbors of each node so I don't have to go up or down anymore, I can just go straight to the neighbor node. That made things so much better, but the render range is probably way too much now. My GPU is crying. So then I made the range acceptable, fixed some little bugs, added back the fog at the edges of the render distance, and we finally had something similar to before. But it was now time to add back literally every feature because right now there's nothing. First the destruction with the fireballs, oof it's laggy but it works I guess, kinda. You can also see that there's no particles, that's because now that I have my own renderer, nothing else gets rendered. No meshes, no particles, nothing. My shader is literally rendering the whole screen. I still have Bevy in the background but it is only used to call the shader and send it information, so I cannot even use Bevy meshes. I started by trying to add particles. It was pretty easy to add but it lags so much with a lot of particles. Each ray having to check if it hits every particle is just way too heavy, 
so instead I can check the particle's position and draw them on the camera. Kinda like a normal 3D renderer. It won't use ray tracing then, but for particles, it's okay. The problem with that is that I can't tell easily where to draw them on the camera because of the perspective. By the way, did I show the perspective I coded? I can adjust parameters like the FOV. How cool is that? I can see almost behind me. Okay, it's making me a little sick, but it does look pretty cool. Anyway, fixing the particles took a long time because I had to do some nerdy things like matrices. I ended up with a really strange looking code and a negative FOV value, but uh, I mean, it works. So now I have a shader with ray tracing and normal 3D rendering at once. Apparently, I really can't pick something and stick with it. I always gotta change everything. <laughs> I still have to fix collisions, add back meshes of enemies and add a few other things to get back to where I was, but that's gonna take a while, so maybe for another vid. I don't want to end this video with the same thing I had in my previous one. Come on, I made a ray tracer, let's ray trace! The best thing about ray tracers is reflections. And what is better for reflections than water? Nothing, so I decided to add that. I made some water voxels float in the air to test it. First, they are just a texture like any other voxel. But by making the rays bounce and add the color of any voxel hit from the bounce to the screen, I now have a reflection. It's that simple. I can also offset the angle of the reflection on the water. And if I make that offset change over time, it creates a sort of wave effect in the reflection. That's pretty epic. I don't think I could have made this quality of water reflection without using ray tracing. And since it only adds one additional ray, it's not too bad for performance. Another cool thing to do with ray tracing is refraction, which is a fancy way to say the rays change path. I decided to implement it on the glass because why not? I tried a couple things. The first one looked pretty cool, but it was way too intense. The second one was better, but you could see strange lines between voxels that refract the rays. I think it looked pretty cool though. The last one was the more realistic version, I guess, which just kinda bends the light in one direction. So there's no real effect unless you look at the edge and move. I really like all of the effects you can do with ray tracing. I could do even more like make the light bounce on nearby things and add a bunch of other cool features, but that would be really pushing it for real-time ray tracing. If you want a ray tracer to have super realistic results, you kinda need to render multiple frames and average the results, but then if you move around, it breaks. So it's not really good for gameplay. Anyway, I think the result looks pretty nice and the performance is surprisingly good, I would say even better than before. I can load the map as I move around without too much lag, and that can still be improved. So hopefully in the next video I'll improve it even more, and I'll also add meshes rendering and collisions. I would also like to improve the world by adding trees, bodies of water that are hopefully not floating in the air, more voxels like sand, gravel, and a few other things. I would also like to add physics such that if you break parts in the air they fall down, but that seems pretty hard. Anyway, thanks for watching and subscribe for more.